What's going on guys, big welcome to you all to our channel, we are Team Crushing the Meta and I'm here with you guys to talk about the ban list, but in a different way. What we're going to do today is we are going to tackle the whole ban list or restriction list as they like to call it and uh, we'll say which cards deserve to be there and what not. If you guys don't agree with me then you should definitely let me know in the comment section below which cards you think should be on the ban list or should be taken off the ban list. So we have five different kinds of ban when it comes to Bushi and it comes to Carter Finger. We have restricted to one, so you could play only one copy of it in your deck. We have restricted as a starting finger, so you cannot play that card as a starter. We have unrestricted, so it's off the list. We have restricted, which is actually banned. So when we say restricted in this video, we mean banned, you cannot play it. And you have choice restriction, which means a card cannot play with another card for a crazy combo or an unhealthy loop. All right, let's go through the list and explain all of the cards. First of all, we have Refros. I will not go too deep into this card, but explain to you very fast our thoughts about this. Refros is a card that, in my personal opinion, should not be on the list because NG Feathers are not doing that much right now in premium. But Refros has an unhealthy loop that it could create. It's a counter charger like crazy. It goes through your deck, it puts a stand trigger back to your deck, it lets you take damage again, which makes cards like Nurse of Broken Heart or another cards that gain power from having damage go like crazy. So is Refros an unfair card? Yes. Having one copy of it in your deck is enough? Yes. Why do I say that it should be back? Is because I don't think Angels is doing much. Why shouldn't it, shouldn't it be back? Is because we don't want to have cards back that will be restricted to one yet again in the future. And this is one of the cards that is on a thin line to even being banned. And being up to one, which means that it's harder for you to loop it. So all in all, Refros should stay on the ban list and should stay restricted to one. Refros, Urwatar, different starter, uh, different stands that we have got in the G era that were too good because of their ability and not because they were stands. And Refros was one of the cards that was good being a stand and having an amazing ability. Then we get to Gold Paladins, and Gold Paladins has also two cards that are on the list. Two, both of them are for premium because Gold Paladin in standard is all right. They are not that, uh, they are very strong, don't get me wrong, but they still are not like broken. But when it comes to premium, the superior ride give you a huge advantage over your opponent because you could stride while they go to grade two. Also your strides, if you have two complex, you could stride right away while your opponent's at grade one. And your opponent can't do anything about it because the, I mean, the superior, right? The striding, they could if they don't give you the counterblast, but the superior, they can't do anything about it because it does not cost a counterblast or anything. So the starter was taken out as a first starter, which was the card that made the superior right easier to get off. So agree with that 100% gold paladins, even in like wards last year, the year before that, uh, it was just a top contender and it did top a lot of tournaments. And that's why I agree with it being on the list, of course. Then we have Wonder Ezel and Wonder Ezel is a stupid card, especially by having XL2. Without XL2, it's a all right card because you have Wonder Ezel and you will superior ride into something else from your deck and you gain XL1 and that was okay, that was alright. But now you plus out of Wonder Ezel. So you rewrite, you have less great trees in your deck, you have more XL circles and you draw out of it. And uh, that's, that's just plain stupid. So this card, of course, should have been restricted the moment that XL2 came out and uh, it was too long in the format and in my opinion it should have been gone for 
like very long time. So for gold, yes, agreed. Uh, for angels, agreed. And then we go to Oracle Think Tank, and when it comes to Oracle Think Tank, we have the starter, the cat. And I will put the link in the description section below so you guys could check them out if you don't know the cards of these uh, that I'm talking about. So you could just click on the link and click on the card and read it yourself. But uh, as I said, I will go fast through them. So the cat right here has a very unfair skill because it said you target three cards of your deck and your opponent will choose one among them and that card goes to your hand and the other two will go to the drop zone. The problem with it is, is you could still choose three of the same card. So three Bobos and your opponent would choose a Bobo, all right? Because they can't choose anything else. So that makes the card unfair. If they would Irata the card, which would say three different cards, then it's okay. Because if you say three different cards, like three cards with different card names, then your opponent cannot choose three of the same card, which makes it an interesting card to play. All right, then we have the Ichikishima, the uh, new one from the uh, premium collection. And when it comes to this card, this card helped Orca Think Tank to become way better as a clan. Orca Think Tank, before this card came out, has two big problems. First one is getting Oracle off if your opponent rushes too much when you want to get into your Stillwater next turn, like the Stillwater with Sign Atom combo. And this card helped with that because of its GB3 ability that said if this card is face up in your G zone, then the, all the cards in your G zone count as cards in your hand. So you flip this or you stride this and flip herself, then you have already two, which means that your Oracle would activate if you only have three cards in your hand. And that makes this card also stupid and crazy strong. But that's not all. The problem with the card is, is it said that your opponent auto abilities of their guardians could not activate and also it gives power. So what, what does that mean? That means that your opponent would have to deal with her as your first stride, which fixes the problem, as I said, the Oracle and the second problem by Oracle Ting Ting do not have a good first stride. And this card by itself fixes that problem being on the finger circle and being in your Jizen. So what could Bushi do about this to make this card better? Well, in Irata and restrict her to 1. The Irata should say her first ability GB2 or GB3. If you make her GB3, which is the best in my opinion, then your opponent could not even use her as a, as a first stride if the G guard wants. But they could use her as a second stride. And they could use her only once. Why once? Because if they go first stride, they flip her, because then you have the, the access to her second ability, then you cannot use her anymore. So you're committing to go for the other Stillwater. If you go first stride and you flip something else, and then you get into your second stride, then it's up to you to go for her or the other Stillwater. And if you go for the other Stillwater, you will get punished by you not flipping her so you don't have Oracle. If you didn't have Oracle, so you have to go into her. Yes, I've put a lot of thoughts when it comes to this card, but pretty much those are my thoughts. So I hope that you understand it. If you don't, then let me in the, let me know in the comment section below and I, I try to explain it again. But pretty much this Ichikishima was an unfair card, especially against the Protect matchup, because you could spam this Ichikishima and your opponent would still cannot use their auto abilities. Their G guards would not work, their PGs would not work, and even their protect one markers would not work. All right, then we get to Nobutama, we have Jamie and Rena on the same list. That's completely understandable because Rena takes card from your hand and attack you with them, and Jamie will let you only have six or even four cards in your hand. And that combo is insanely good. And me as a Nobutama player, Chris Flores plays in Paladin as our Nobutama main and Nobutama genius, also agrees with this 100%. Murakumo, Shiryuki to 1 in standard. Yes, absolutely yes. The card is unfair. You could guard with it multiple times a turn, which would destroy your opponent formation. You could also call this card to make your opponent. Uh, front row or especially their vanguard, yes, three units, but especially their vanguard 
less strong, which means you hit better numbers as an Excel plan. Only problem with this card being restricted to one is the fact that this card has a second ability. And that second ability add a Shiryuki to your hand, which is stupid because you could only play one Shiryuki. So this is the only problem I have with her being at one. Should she be at two? I don't think so, but it definitely makes sense with her second ability to let her be at two. Maybe in the future they will let her back to be at two because it doesn't really deserve to be at one if Morokumu is not topping anymore. Especially we're talking standard right here. All right, Tachikazi Engeblader. Of course, I disagree because you're taking out their best VR and though they don't really have that much to fall back on. Then you would say, but the card is unfair. Yes, it's unfair only if the Tachikazi player goes first. So what should they do to change this? The second ability of this card should have been when this card attacks, blah, 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 counter blast, blah, 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 we stand, blah, blah, blah. If your opponent is on grade three or if you already have a grade three in your soul. If you do that, then it doesn't matter who goes first. You still cannot activate this card's ability if your opponent is still on grade two. And I think that they should have given this card an errata. And that's very unfair for the Chikazi players because they did give an errata to Bermuda Triangle, to Riviera. They didn't say you can only play one Riviera right now. So why would you do that and not do this? I don't know. I do know, but well, it's stupid because yes, they do prefer the Tachikaze player to play another deck and they don't want the Bermuda player to play another deck because it's Bermuda and this is touchy. That's my opinion on it, but I still think that Engelblader should be played at four in both formats and uh, it just should say the same as God Hand, make him the same as God Hand. God Hand only gets the crit and the extra drive check if your opponent's sitting at three. Uh, I mean the crit, but uh, this card should, the whole ability, the whole second ability should only activate if you have a grade 3 in your soul or if your opponent is sitting at grade 3, right? Alright, then we get to Narukami, Chuo being at 2. I agree with this 100% because the deck is strong as it is right now. It doesn't need even more multi-attacking options. I think that we all agree on this. Dark Regulars, we have uh, one restriction for Premium and one for Standard. Enigma Assassin for Premium, uh, yes, of course. The only thing that you could do if you want to take this out of the list is to say this card and NLK could not be played in the same deck. Then you could just still play him with Charlotte. But I think him being at one or her is, uh, is perfect because it was an unfair card, especially combined with NLK. Then we get to hard leg. Uh, this is the new restriction and standard for dark regulars. Uh, the developers' ideas behind this restriction or ban is that it will be too good with the new support. I would say, okay, that's good, but push the time, push the date on the card that when it will apply to be restricted. So whenever the new support will come out, then it will be restricted. For now, people should play it because this is their only win con. And even with this, and Dark Regulars have an alright rep representation nowadays, and in Standard, of course more in Premium, but in Standard it's alright. People are playing the clan again. Well, now they won't. Because this was their only win con, and it's not an unfair card. It's actually a card that needs a lot of setup to get. So I don't agree with this. I think that if the card is way too good with the new support, then when the new support come out, take the card out. Not now, because it doesn't supposed to be on the list now. People still like to play. And then Varian from our team gave me a very, very, very good um, point, and that is because there are not many tournaments right now, uh, Bushi is taking this card out because they don't want to bring out another list like in few months. So this will be the list, nothing will change that much because we all know that reason why the list came out is Katrina. 
but we will get into that later. And there is another point that was pointed out by a very good friend of mine from France, Daniel, and also Eno, of course. And they told me that maybe the developers are trying to take out some cards that are common and rares, but though do make a huge difference in their clans. And that is the case when it comes to Dark Regulars, Pill Moon and Grand Blue. But I don't know if that theory is true. It does make sense, but I still think even with that theory, this ban should have been active when the new cards come out and, and not in my ready. Okay, so we have Pill Moon and Pill Moon has their Purple Trapezes and Jumping Jill, not in the same deck, Choice Restriction, I agree with that, this is the old Purple Trapezes because they could make an unhealthy loop and you could like make an, like, an, an, infinite, uh, an infinite loop with the infinite power and your opponent can't say anything about it. So this is something that uh, of course would be taken out. Uh, there is one more loop in my opinion that should also be taken out, that's the loop from, the loop from Rukumu. I know that it's Murakumu's only way to win, but I I think it's stupid because you should not have an infinite loop with infinite power. That's that's insane because your opponent can't do anything about it except playing a Honolulu, which is sad. It's it's really, really sad if you have that. So this is the same thing. And uh, then we have uh, uh, Dorian being restricted to one in standard and a premium. I agree with both. In premium, this card has a nasty timing to get off, which means that you could abuse her with multiple cards. And when it comes to standard, we saw how this deck won wards last year. And again, congrats to Nuno, he's a great player, and he have come so close to winning wards, like the, the, the last time he went in third, and one of our best players in, in Europe as well. But... Um, Dorian right here in standard give you so much hand advantage that even the top dogs from this format which are let's say Fang, um, Aquas being Raven and Vanguisher from Narukami will not com compete with this because take out all of their regards which means that your Vanguisher will not be easy to get off and it's just the draw power that you get from her is just insane so being up to one is good the the pill moon player needs to make different choices and different decks and that's good because the deck was plain stupid all right we get to grand blue and uh we have night runner and night crow the seven c cards my opinion these cards would be taken out of the list why the strength of the grand blue deck if you guys don't know, we had a few years back, like three years back, we had a deck that it it was called Great One Seven Seas, and the Great One Seven Seas deck was insanely strong because it could stay at Great One, but call Great Twos to the field from the drop zone when attacking, have multi attack options, have strong columns, and still stay at Great One. The problem with that is that we didn't have the rule that said if you stay already one turn on grade 3 you could stride. And in the G era where a lot of your cards need GB1 to be active, you could just lose against this deck because you can't do much. So why are these cards on the list now? I don't know. Because now it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter at all because if somebody would like to play the Great One Seven Seas deck, sure, let them do it. Even if we stay at our Grade Two or Grade Three turns, we have very strong decks because of the V support. But even if you play a G deck with a new rule, you could stride if you have already stayed one turn on Grade Three, which means you're good to go. So I think those cards should be taken out of the list. Although JJ from our team don't agree with me on this because he said that these cards have also some strange rulings which give you a lot of headache as a judge. So between this and that I think that these cards should be put back on like you could play any amount of them that you want to 
because again this would not make a huge difference and let people play seven c's if they want to play seven c's and if even if they want to play great one seven c's let them do it it would not do much but it's all a it's, it's a lot of fun to do right i mean it's an old deck that will come in a format that it would not do much because the amount of power that our triggers have the amount of shield that they have is just insane so then we get to uh, uh, Flanger right here, which is the uh, same thing as uh, the uh, the Heartland. Both of them, I, I have the exact same explanation. Being a low rarity card, it's easy for them to ban it in standard, especially. Uh, being a card that gives the deck the only win con, take it out too early and People will play the clan even less. That so these cards, Flanger and Hardleg should have been put on the ban list when the new support come out. So we are convinced that these cards and we saw the new cards and we know yes this is uh, th this doesn't work. This is too much. This is too OP. The same as we saw from Jumping Jill, Purple Trip pieces. The same thing as Jamie and Ren. So too early for Grand Blue to suffer from this. Uh, this should not have been on the list. Bermuda Triangle. We have Kirk. Is an unfair card. You need to be at one. The same as Refros. So yes, and uh, that's of course in premium. Another restriction in premium is Ellie. Ellie being a crazy good G guard that was never should have been created the same way it was flipping herself back is insane being able to have such much power shield bullshit is too much so the card is definitely one of the cards that will stay on the balance for a very long time then we have Anj Anji 2-1 um, I don't know about this I think that she should at least be at 2 then you would say yes, but then you could easily get to your ultimate stride cost. I would say, so what? <laughs> if, if you could, then all right. I mean, you could do that already with so many cards from the V series that could search you the top so many cards, or that could just search your finger to your hand. So uh, let let NG be back at two. Uh, that would be easy. Although people still don't agree with me because Anj is the best grade 3 in the whole game that you would stride on. And I would agree with this because if you take Anj and put it in Spike Brothers, Spike Brothers would work even better. And I would definitely play a 4 copies of her even if she doesn't give a marker. Then we have also the Irata on uh, Revere. And this should also be an Irata on Anger Blader in my opinion. New Elector, we have Lizabeth. Yes, 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 yes. Lisbeth is a card that could also create a loop and uh, should stay on the list the same as Refros and the same as Kirk. Then we get to the main event, which is Green Katrina. Green Katrina being on the list is something that people wanted. Um, I don't get why the Neo Nectar players are sad or angry about this. I mean, you played Katrina for a very long time for two formats or two years and, and that's enough. Enough is enough. The card's unfair. The card should have been on the list. Um, like, whenever they banned the Oracle Think Tank uh, Ichikishima, this card should have also been on the list. Why? I will tell you why. When it comes to Katrina, there is a lot to talk about. Because I'm a Spike Brothers player. And Spike Brothers hate when other clans get their skills but better. Alright. First of all, Katrina doesn't have a cost. Something flipping, flipping something in the G-Zone face-up is not a cost, it makes the card better. It doesn't have a counter blast, it doesn't even have a soul blast, it doesn't really even have to discard a card from hand, it has nothing. Which makes the card insanely good and your opponent can't do anything about it. Damage denying you does not work. You have enough soul to play or use for your other cars, although the clan doesn't really solve last that much, but again, it doesn't have a cost at all. Then it makes tokens as the number of face-up cards you have in your G zone. 
which means whenever you stride into this as a second, third, or fourth time, if your opponent survived that long, then the card becomes even better and more free. Even more free. It pluses you on field like crazy. Then it gives also your token extra 10k each. So that's another 20k on your columns. All of that is not enough. So what it does is when it attacks, you retire all of your tokens and you search that much cards from your deck and you put them on the field. All right, let's put all of that into vacuum. When we talk about clans that could multi-attack, as I said before, you need to have kind of a cost or a drawback. This card does not have any drawbacks. The New Nectar player could be a very bad player. I'm not saying that you are, but it he could or she could be a very bad player and they would still kick ass when it comes to playing against a better player. Why? Because you don't need skills to be good at using this card. And people would get angry a little bit when I say this, and that's because you do need skills, you do need to make good combos, you, you need to get ma to make good feels. Yes, but when people see that once or twice, they could copy that and they do not need skills to do it. Like even the Murkuma loop needs skills. You need to get the right cards, you need to place them at the right place. This card doesn't. You only need to call everything you have in your hand early on, you make tokens, you attack with them, and you don't really lose much from hand because you already create field by having tokens. Then you get to discard, and you pretty much create as much tokens as you can from your rearguards, and you attack with them, which is, let's say that you have two tokens on this side, because at one moment you'll be calling a rearguard, creating a token, and putting that token on the top of the rearguard, and you have even the promo grade 2 who could create even more tokens is stupid but what you will do is you will have two tokens on this side and two tokens on the other side which is easy to get off then you attack with those tokens with the column is a 30k by itself all right we're not even talking about cyclone let's leave cyclone out of it because i still think that this card should have been banned even before cyclone came in into uh, existence like, even before they thought of Cyclone skill, this card should have been banned or should have at least has a counterblast for its first or second ability. So, 30, 30, then you attack with this, which you could also boost with one of your tokens, so it's another huge attack, and you could take out all of the tokens and put new tokens on the field. And we're not talking about a multi-attack with, let's say, the grade 2 and a counterblast, we're saying only that is 5 attacks a turn that are 30 plus without markers without triggers and that's stupid because your opponent can't do anything about it and you've already rushed them in the early game and now they have to deal with this as well and on the next turn let's say that your opponent is so good that they retired your whole field which Kagero need to go to a strike to do that now but let's say that your opponent retires your whole field they did a little bit pressure on you and uh, you end up with having few cards in your hand. All right, but you G-guarded once, which you flip the, you use the flip G-guard for some reason, or just a normal G-guard. So you have three cards face up in your G-zone. All right, three, because you G-guarded. But even if you don't G-guard and you have only two, but you have a, a token creator in your hand, you're good to go. You go to this card again, and then you use her first ability to create more tokens, to get more power, you create more tokens, and you do the same shit, shit again. Only, you only need one thing to stride into this card. So what am I getting at? I'm getting at the fact that it does not cost Counterblast, there is no drawback out of it, you do not minus, and it's by far the best stride in your Nectar when it comes to any deck. I mean, even if the deck does not create tokens, then you get to this card later on, like a second or a first strike, and it still does what it does without any drawback. So I think that this card, I said before, and I think that this card should have been put to one, the same as Morfessa should also have put to one. Why do Morfessa and this card need to be at one? Because there are good strides in the clan. And the clan should need to have only one opportunity 
to go to this card and they need to choose wisely when they will do so. And Mufasa the same thing. Mufasa is a good first stripe if you do not get her second skill off which gets like the card restrict and uh, the crit and power. Even if you don't get that off it's still a very good first stripe because it draws and you could go into that you could see what you will draw and hope that you will get into your uh, ritual blah 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 but if you don't then it's still good because it still does the same or even better than your other first strides as long as you can pay the compliments. So when it comes to Katrina it's the same thing and Katrina being on the uh, ban list right now that she is banned is because of Cyclone because it's too good with Cyclone but as I said I, I even before that I thought the card should have been on one and then we come to the Mission Police, we have Commander Laurel. I do not agree with Commander Laurel being on the list, but it, there have been so many good points pointed out to me why he's on the list. Especially with the, um, the deck being able to superior right. The deck has now Geo My Glass. The deck could, uh, you could even build it with Crane Elementals. So now, like you have still a multi-attacking Fengard with Crane Elementals because you put them on the field anyway. So yes, I agree with Command Laurel being on the list because of all of those uh, things that people would say. But for me, it's not that good that it should be on the list because we know that we have way better cards in premium. They are, they are better, they are stronger and that's why this card is not on the same level as Katrina or not on the same level as Elizabeth. So, that's actually it for this list. There are two more cards that I think that should have been on the list. So when it comes to the list, we kind of agree with almost everything, except the fact that Angerblader should have gotten a Rata, except the fact that this card from Dark Reg is in standard, and this card from Grimblue in standard should both have been gotten restricted when the new card will come out and not now already so just change the dates that that should have been uh, the the thing and um katrina should have been way uh, like she, she should have been already on the list so there are two more cards that i think that should be on the list and those are my personal opinion the first one is as i said mofessa mofessa should be 2-1 the same as uh, what Katrina should have been and you would say why as I explained before because there are way better strides that you also have in Shadow Paladin that you could use in different situations but before because you have Mofessa the Shadow Paladin player is getting lazy and using Mofessa multiple times so I think that Mofessa should be at one because you could you should have only one opportunity to go for Mofessa the second card that I think should be on the list is Gastil with NLK it's just a choice restrict because Castile and NLK should not be played in the same deck because of the like it is your better stride even if you don't make a huge field and go to master of the fifth element it still is the best thing to do so I think that you should just take them out and not be played in the same deck and me as a dark regular player myself I think that's alright because you have better strides, you have better strategies, um, and just the combo of Castile and NLK is it's, it's just disgusting. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, it would it, it, it is a long video, but you need to tell us as well in the comment section below what are your thoughts when it comes to the whole ban list. So not only the cards that we have got lately, but the whole ban list. Why do we need your thoughts? Because we want to know what the current uh, community think of this like there are some cards like anger blader on the list do they deserve that there are cards like shariyuki which you cannot use her second ability is that even possible to put that in a card game like a new player would say hey this shariyuki this she has the second ability why you only play one copy of her then you say yes because i may only play one copy of her then even the new player would say or even a child would say hey that's stupid so now you have a text on the card that does not work. Shout out to Vesli as well because he pointed this out. But uh, yeah, this is in my opinion also something that is stupid. If you develop a card to look like this or ban it, so you cannot play it at all, or just say you could play two. Because playing at one, 
while you have this ability on it is is stupid all right that's it for this video again thank you all for watching keep our channel in check for more content if you haven't subscribed yet subscribe a like and comment on the videos to again let us know what you think about this list and that's it for us thanks for watching yet again until next time